Hello everybody, thank you for joining us today and welcome. I am Alex Gorbunov from 3 Dots and CG School. I will be a presenter today. Today's webinar is dedicated to the preview of 3DS Max Advanced Modeling class that we offer at CG School. Early bird deadline for the first few classes is next week. This will be your last opportunity to receive up to $300 of each class. For more information, please check our website at www the cgschool.com, that link you can see in the middle of your screen right now. And at today's webinar, during the next 80 minutes, I will demonstrate you the modeling techniques used in the creation of the 3D model of this white chair that you can see in the middle of this illustration. And I will demonstrate it from start to finish. So let's go ahead and get started. So first what we want to do is to take a look at all reference image that we have for this project. And this time we have seven reference images, so let's uh, take a quick look at all of them. And all of these images, they give us plenty of information of what this chair looks like, so we can look at it from each side and basically understand what elements it's made of and, you know, see the size and proportion of it. So, and then we want to, having this uh, information, we want to decide in which order we will model all the elements for this chair or so to speak we need to come up with a modeling plan and I suggest the following plan. First we need to model the rear and the front legs of the chair. Then we will create the frame seat that will connect all those legs. Then we will model this top element of the backrest of the chair and then we will model the rest of the back of a chair then we will create these uh, reinforcement bars in the middle, I'm sorry, in the, at the bottom. And finally, we will make a seat of this chair. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and prepare 3ds Max for our project. So open 3ds Max and start with a resetting interface so that you can start working with a nice and clean workspace. Go to front view and disable grid. Now also make sure that you work in, in generic units. So go to customize unit setup and make sure that you work in not with millimeters or inches. You need to be working with generic units, which is basically just the numbers. So now what we need to do is to bring in the reference image for the first element that we're going to model. And according to our plan, that was the rear and the front legs of a chair or specifically we will start with the rear legs. So let's go ahead and take a look at all reference images one more time and see which one works better for that. Now I suggest we use this one and uh, even though we see the armchair here but essentially it's the same model of a chair. It's just got a couple, uh, couple extra elements. This, uh, this armrest and this extra element attached to the front leg that support that armrest, so which is not a problem for us. The reason why we want to use this particular image as a reference is because the rear leg is perpendicular to the view, so it will help us to outline this object with the splines in 3ds Max. So let's clean this image from extra visual information that we don't need by cropping it like this. You can use any image editing software that you have. It can be Adobe Photoshop, it can be MS Paint if you'd like. So the goal here is to get the image like that and save it out in a JPEG. So now you can uh, bring this JPEG into 3ds Max and place it on a background so you can always refer to it. So in the front view, do the following. Go to Create Panel and create plain object of any size. You can also hide the selection brackets because we don't need it. Now for this plane object, go to Modify Panel and change number of length and the width segments to 1. Then go to Material Editor and in any, any sample slot, just for the material in that sample slot, apply that JPEG image into the diffuse channel of that material so that we can stretch this image over this plane object. So go ahead and just double click bitmap and pick that reference image that we just saved out. And that would be this one. Now don't click open right here. First memorize these dimensions of the image in pixels, which is in this particular case is 118 pixels by 350 pixels. Now we need to match the size of our plane object 
in units to the size of this image in pixels. So let's go ahead and do this. Once again, memorize these numbers. 118 by 350. So we're going to set 118 here and 350 there. So now the proportions of, proportions of this plane object is, is correct in relation to the proportion proportions of the reference illustration that we have. So let's go ahead and apply this material to this object and make sure it's visible in the viewport. So in the last step in the preparation of this reference image would be to go to top view and push it back along y-axis so that whatever object we create in the front view would not be coplanar to this uh, plane object. So now we want to outline this rear leg of a chair with a spline. So go to create panel Go to Shapes menu and click this line button so now you can create a line. Now use your favorite technique to outline this rear leg. The only thing I can suggest here, try to use as, as less vertices as possible because it will be easier to adjust them later if you, if you made a mistake. And uh, I just want to show you my favorite technique, how I do it. You may follow it if you'd like. So, I would use only six vertices like, like this to roughly outline this object with, the, with just the straight lines. Then I would go to modify panel and then I go to vertex subobject mode of this editable spline object so that I can select all vertices and convert them into Bezier corner and start manually editing the curvature of each of these segments by adjusting these Bezier control handles so that the goal here is to adjust the curvature of each of these segments to make the shape look like this. So you can, uh, you can take maybe a minute or two and try to make it as good as possible. So I don't want to spend too much time doing that. So let me open the scene where this shape is already perfected. And that would be this scene. Okay, so what you can see here is this outline in form of the editable spline. Now we want to give it some volume. We, we want to turn it from shape into the geometry. So let's go ahead and apply extrude modifier. And of course give it some uh, extrusion amount so that we can see it. something like this. Now right away you can see that the level of detail of the subject is not very good even though it looks looks uh, sort of okay. The number of segments that divide these long curves is not enough. The object is still somewhat low poly, so we need to improve that. And the quickest way in this particular case would be just to go back to the line object and make sure you click this on a modify panel. You click this button, show end result on off toggle. The reason why is because we want to see this object as if all modifiers would have been applied to it. So click this button so you can always see the final result. Now go to this interpolation rollout, uncheck adaptive checkbox, and increase number of steps so that you can see you instantly change in the level of detail of the final object. So this is something that looks good and now we don't want to stop there. We want to add nice and smooth filleted edges to this object. The reason why is because we're trying to do photorealistic model for our photorealistic renders and just like in real life when chair like that is manufactured on a factory it's getting uh, all the edges of it are getting sanded on a sand belt and uh, all the edges look nice and smooth we want to simulate the same effect in our model because when later on we will, when we will render it in you know in our uh, renders all these filleted edges they will catch some nice reflections, some nice highlights. So the bottom line is that we want to add, add the filleted edges to this object. So let's go ahead and convert it into editable poly, then go to edge subobject mode and select top edges here at the top of the object, this one edge in the middle, and two more edges here at the bottom. Now just zoom in closer to to some of these uh, edges and use the chamfer tool. Just click the settings button next to it 